Levi's rant to talk about the fact that there's a lot of work around us. There's just we're just not seeing it the way we used to. And it really worked on me. I stopped buying other blue jeans. I started buying uh, Levi's jeans because I like the ads. Uh, but really, what I liked was I liked the message. Uh, maybe we're just not attuned to seeing work anymore. We think we're looking for jobs. And that message really hit me home way more than a blue jean commercial should. Like I'm going around talking, did you see that Levi's ad? And they're like, shut up. I'm like, no, really. Like, it's about work. It's about jobs. And they're like, shut up twice. And then I'm like, show them the video. Watch it. Listen to that little girl talk. She's smart. And then somebody said, dude, like, it's a script. And the girl reads it. And I was like, nuh uh. It's not true. She's just a smart girl. I'm like, nine-year-old girl on a playground somewhere saying, man, this, maybe we break the world every now and again until we have to fix it again. That's what she tells her friends. So she has no friends in school because she's that kid. My thoughts are that we're in an interesting time. We're in a time where we're still looking backwards. We're looking in the past. We're looking at all this stuff that came before. And so many people, especially in this crowd, shout to the 313. This is the crowd, right? So I go to a lot of fancy places, and a lot of times they ask me what my favorite cities are. I don't know why I didn't ask this question. This is just a question that comes up quite often, as in like they want to be, you know, they want me to like salve them and say, "You're you're good people. You really are." And I tell them my favorite cities are Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, St. Louis, Detroit. And I always make those faces and like, "What do you mean Detroit? Like, what do I mean? What do I mean Detroit?" And I'm like, "Well, the place is in shambles." I said, "No, it is not." It's a chrysalis. You know, Fergie said it best. They try to cover my swagger and I'm on the next shit now. <laughs> That's kind of the deal, right? It's, you know, you're not all just making cars. That You get that one figured out. But you're on the, well, except for those, man. Those are cool. Uh, but you were working, oh, sorry. Radio gods. Um, but the other thing is that we're, we're gate jumping. We're doing lots of new stuff, and there's a lot of growth going on in this doing new stuff business. But there's only one little problem about gate jumping. Gate jumping allows you to make, and, and when I say that term, gate jumping, means uh, you don't need the bosses anymore to prove that you have a great idea. You can launch something on your own, and you can make your own thing. You don't have to wait for people. You can start your own business now. You can decide you're going to do the news in Detroit because you don't like how other people did it, or you're going to do this because you don't like method, or you're going to open your own little agency because you got fired after the other one. Uh, <laughs> agency firings here is kind of like, you know, lawn mowing. It just, it just happens. <laughs> there goes Sarah. Um, it's true, though. I mean, I'm not, like, I'm not sticking a fork in you. I mean, you're not all like, what? Of what does he speak? People lose jobs here? Uh, you know, my friend Alan said, you know, as, as goes Detroit, so goes Toledo. So you're not even screwing up just here. <laughs> it's like the butterfly effect, only the suck butterfly. You can quote suck butterfly. I just made that up. Um, but, you know, all those little tiny boats that we're making, the good news is you can put a hundred tiny boats in the water and the rising tide rises all the boats. You've, you've heard that, right? You know, that's, I preach that all the time. Man, we're all just going to figure it out someday. I had this thought just this morning, uh, probably because of sleep deprivation, uh, but I was thinking, you know, a hundred tiny boats is awesome until you need to move an elephant. You can't move an elephant on a hundred tiny boats, meaning you do have to recluster and gather mass to do something of great impact and great value. You can't have all these little tiny boats in the water if you're looking to make something really change. You know, as Michael said, take a look at yourself and make a change. That's what he meant. Look, Michael and Fergie, I'm going to just keep going. I mean this. But, I mean, Twitter isn't cool. Using Twitter to do amazing things is cool. You guys have a freely wired network in here of people you can grab out and grow and, and cluster and clump. And yes, you have to agree that you're going to do it a little different than the original vision, but you've got so many people here all kind of like ticking away at something. Put some mass behind it. Get a couple hundred people. Bring the people who would never come to this event into it, and don't talk to one lick about Twitter. Just like, how do we make this thing work? Because no one starts a new business by going, you know what we're going to do? We're going to install a phone system. And then we've got something. <laughs> right? Oh, we're going to get laptops. Whoa. Watch us then. Right? 
that's what you're saying when you're saying, like, Twitter is so awesome. I'm going to start a business and change the world, and I'm going to use Twitter to do it. Awesome. Don't start there. Get to the, like, somewhere down at the bottom. That's like, you know, I'm buying a new car, and it's going to have the best tires. They get you somewhere. Don't you love when people use way too many analogies? Like, okay, we got it. Shut up. Are those doing amazing things, cool things? You guys know the name Will Allen yet? Have you seen him on TED? Or Pop Tech, the other TED. Cheap TED. Main, main TED. Uh, Will Allen's this dude from Milwaukee uh, who, you know, Milwaukee's kind of like here without cars. They kind of have nothing. They, you know, they're just trying to figure out who they are. He's figuring out urban farming. He's taking people's compost and making urban composting, and he's taking a bunch of two-by-eights and then taking the freshly made compost and putting it down and making organic farms inside of really urban areas and teaching people that you can have amazing organic stuff for no money. In fact, you can make money doing this whole thing, starting with other people's trash. All you need is a little bit of lumber. So, I mean, it doesn't cost like more than a hundred and something bucks to start. And you said they're you know, putting up tons of organic material. You gotta just Google the name Will Allen a little later and go find him on, I think, Pop Tech. How much both? Do you ever have that thing like you like read fast company and ink and then you can't remember where you read the thing? That's me all the time. Mark Horvath, invisiblepeople.tv. He's, he's, he's giving voice to the homeless. Now that, that, that alone is a pretty darn cool project, watching you know what homeless people are into and all that. But if you look at wearevisible.com, I think it is, he's teaching them all how to use things like the social network, how to tell their story and how to set up a Facebook page and all that. I'm reading more homeless people's blogs than I'm reading tech nerd blogs. <laughs> Which, by the way, is a lot more fun because I really kind of don't give a shit about Foursquare. Don't, don't, don't. But I do give uh, to how people are going to make their next life. And as this rap is winding down, uh, John Swanson is doing 300wordsaday.com. It's, uh, it's similar to the speech that he had up here with Michael who I can only think of as Holy Cow Creative, because we only know each other by our Twitter handles now. It's Dave Zilla, not Dave Linderberry. So, uh, 300 wordsadaycom is actually allowing you to understand the Bible in modern terms, and not in that way that you feel like you're reading a Bible, because I'm not especially religious. I love God, I hate his fans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy to do, because they hump your leg like marketers. have one horn and they're lovely and Satan has two and he's bad. <laughs> Becky McCreda is small business survivor. She's out there teaching small business people stuff. Tourism currents, trying to help little towns figure out tourism because, man, there's a bunch of people who need saving, don't they? My gosh, they still think flyers at the local gas stations are a place to get me to go to something. You know, my kid collects those up and it's like, we've got to go to these places. And then I empty them out of the car a month later. You know, that's not how tourism happens. We don't look at the big giant picture of a tiger and then go to that place. I went to your zoo once, by the way. I spoke there. It was a totally crazy thing. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And there's a giraffe behind me. I mean, I mean, not in the room with me. That'd be really crazy. But I mean, right out the window. I'm used to like, you know, vultures at the GM head. Things, I, no, I'm not like that. They're not there. It's your city. Ask Dave Zilla the vulture story. But you've got networking people here. You've got you've got the Terry B and the Charlie Wahlberg. You've got all the people here. You don't need us monkeys to fly in from all over the creation. You know, we're just here to kind of shine the shine the floors with you. Um, look look for ways that we can make more work. I'm starting this thing about 100 jobs. I'm trying to find a way to employ 100 people. That's partly why I started another company, because it wasn't like I, I was sitting around going, man, I have a lot of free time. I should do something and spend all my own money. Because uh, it's just sitting in the bank like that. That's dopey. Uh, and I started this thing called Human Business Works, and it's because I had this sort of notion that how can I start more jobs for more people? And when I said jobs, I really mean work. Because jobs is just a unit of measurement. And that's what we keep thinking we need is a job, but what you need is work. People with pickup trucks think, I have a pickup truck so I can move stuff from here to there. I don't mean like Chevy Avalanche, like the fake up trucks, but I mean like, <laughs> I'm not trashing GM, I'm trashing the Avalanche. <laughs> Who made that? It's like that Aztec. Um, <laughs> I'm here all week, and I'm going to GM tomorrow, so that's, that's going to be funny. Uh, not anymore. Made from a front star yet. They're my 
friends. Uh, so kind of some takeaways in my last two minutes. First off, you're going to need a bigger boat, uh, which is a John's quote. But you are going to need a bigger boat. A hundred little boats will hold an elephant, and you need to start moving some elephants around. There, there is not, no one's coming to save you, just FYI. No one's coming to, you know, like, here, Detroit, I'm the savior fairy. Bing, here's your money. Uh, that government came and went. Um, Suki, Suketu Meta said this, discomfort is an investment. This is from a book called Maximum City. I stole it out of Kevin Kelly's new book, um, uh, What Technology Needs. Discomfort is an investment. Boy, we're discomforted, aren't we, right now? Do something about that. Start investing. Let's invest in things like time. Because it's amazing where you're spending your time right now. And you're going to run out of time. And time is one of those that kinds of things you don't get back. As much money as I have, I still lack time. I'd rather have time every single day. Let's get bigger boats. Let's get 100 jobs. Tithing is alive and well, by the way. For every money ecosystem you make, come up with a cause component. And on that, I'm going to get ready to close because the only other thing is, and this is for all you in the room, not all you on the street. Uh, I started a project with Rob Hatch and John Swanson and Estrella Rosenberg and Mark Pittman and some others called 501missionplace.com. And it's a private community site uh, where you can go and start to learn some stuff about how to build better nonprofits, how to do better fundraising, how to sort of get more out of what you're doing with it. And that's one of the charity type things I'm working on is how do I help a bunch of nonprofits instead of helping one at a time by speaking on a stage? Start looking for ways to add cause stuff to it. Oh, I almost forgot the offer. Uh, anybody who isn't interested in the nonprofit space and wants to go to 501missionplace.com, in the room, not all y'all, sign up right now and you get a free month. And uh, that will give you a chance to decide if you think it's worth it and you can get into it. That's my only sales pitch. Uh, I'm Chris Brogan, and thank you so much for your time, but you're who's, you're who, you are who are important to me and you matter to me, so your applause is for each other. Thank you.